much for joining us for Table Talk tonight and we're going to be talking about uh, entrepreneurship, we're going to talk about career development, and we're going to talk about uh, uh, young professionals, what's happening with our young professionals and our college students. We have a college student here with us tonight. We have a young professional an entrepreneur here with us tonight from Nancy, France. <laughs> Since I can't speak French, Jay, I'm going to put like a little something to what, what I, when I'm talking to you, since I can't. I know you that's, guys have that's been, cool. on, been getting on to me about when next time I come, I need to have a little French. So I've been working on it, but I can't share that with you tonight because it wouldn't be good. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, thank you guys so much for joining. We may have another guest that will join us, uh, Sharnissa, and so she, she may be still trying to get on. But we're going to go ahead and get started. And I'm going to start off by having my special guest introduce themselves and tell a little bit about themselves. Um, and, and, and Jay, I'm going to start with you. Okay. Well, hi, everyone. I'm uh, Jay or Jeremiah Lucero. So um, to, to put everything in a nutshell, um, I'm a music producer, musician, uh, composer. And uh, it all started for, for me uh, being in a family with musicians and I started playing drums at church when I was about, I think, 12, 13 years old and grew up and uh, always had music in, uh, in my life. And um, then went out to pursue a different paths, went on to, to university, college, where I was kind of looking for myself to know what to go to, what kind of degree, what major, and music was always there as a good um, B plan because I always had good grades in music, and that was kind of how I got into a music minor and continued, and, um, and it always stuck to me, so I always wanted to have a sort of other major, I studied government to have a, a diploma, something I could go in the business world, but always keep him in mind that my first plan was to go in something into music. And um, it's really funny because I really discovered what I really wanted to do in my last semester of college. So it was kind of like at the last second where uh, it was kind of a revelation for me and my teacher who uh, taught me film scoring composition who really told me this is a, a calling for you. And uh, mm. she, she encouraged me to go really far with it. She even spoke to my parents directly to, so that I wouldn't drop this. So that was really what pushed me to go with it. And then was kind of just the, the time where I was looking for myself. I went back home. Uh, I started looking for internships. I started trying to figure out how do I fit in this business world where to succeed, you need to know people, you need to be someone, so you have to have credentials, you have to figure out, um, it, it, it's kind of it's kind of like when you want to go into a fancy club and they say, we don't know you, you can't come in, and how do they know you if you can't ever come in, so it's kind of a, this double trap, so um, yeah. um, doing this, and as I'm going along, I'm still discovering how I can adapt kind of my sort of creative mindset and my business mindset so that both can flourish together without contradicting themselves and at the same time um, me as a person as I'm growing, changing, discovering new things that inputs into what I do creatively and also the way of how I think of business because businesses are always changing and I guess businesses adapt to mindsets, they create mindsets or they try to fulfill a need and mindsets that are already created. So um, yeah, and right now I, I started uh, creating a production company, panacheproductions.com and um, in, in, this, in this pursuit I've been producing um, film scores for short films, uh, trying to uh, develop my network with um, young filmmakers and entrepreneurs as myself and along the way discovered 
oh, well, if I'm doing music production, then I can do music editing. So I got an opportunity in music editing, and, and then I can, oh, then I know a lot of singers from church who would want to do some, uh, some music. So then I got music production on a different side with just working with artists, and then I'm like, oh, well, this is all interesting, but maybe you need to promote your music. So I started thinking about communication and marketing. So all these ideas kind of fit in together, and at the same time, they're ne never static. So um, on this road, I'm still um, promoting this production company that's still blooming, and at the same time, um, look at possibilities to uh, promote myself and promote people I work with. And that's how I got a big interest in communication as well because you need to be a good communicator to have a business and to to succeed in business. So uh, in a nutshell, yeah, it's longer than I thought it would be, but that's me. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Jay. Thank you for, for that information. I have a couple of questions for you once we get started based on what you shared. Okay. Uh, and so now we're, we're, we're going to move. Sharnissa, actually our other guest, she's actually trying to get on. She's having problems with the link getting on with her computer. For uh, So we're going to move on to Faduma. Did I say that correctly? Yes, you did. Okay, so let me Thank get you. I'm glad I did. I want you to go ahead and introduce yourself as well. Will do. So hi, everyone. Um, thank you, Yolanda, for having me. And just to kind of... I guess, like, summarize my short-ish life so far. I'm a sophomore at NYU, <laughs> and um, I'm pursuing a degree in computer science as well as social and cultural analysis. And the reason for doing both is I eventually want to work in government tech, and so that is a kind of field that I see has a lot of potential in terms of upgrading if any of you guys have ever applied for citizenship or even something uh, to a lower degree of interaction with the government, it's been quite cumbersome. Lots of file work and just nonsense, essentially, that can be shortened and that can be communicated online versus printing and wasting. And so that is something I want to pursue eventually. Um, the reason why I got into STEM was uh, in fifth grade, I first learned about Mae Jameson, who was the first African-American woman to go into space, and when I saw her photo, she looked just like me, so ever since then, I've kind of <laughs> wanted to be just like her, basically, except go into space, you know, kind of terrified of that, but um, that's she's a person who kind of got me interested in the field and kind of serves as a motivation, because as we all know, it's not really the most diverse field, and it's also a field that comes with its... Uh, hardships and so I'm super glad to be in it. Um, I do question uh, myself in it sometimes but uh, I'm really glad right now and at the moment I've worked with nonprofits in terms of um, upgrading their technologies and this upcoming summer I'm super excited to be joining the Facebook team. I'm not necessarily sure what exactly I'll be doing but hopefully something cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Thank you guys so much. I see Sharnissa's picture. Can I hear? Can, Sharnissa, can you hear us? I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can hear you, and I love that picture. Are you trying to get your camera on now? I am. Can you help me out here? <laughs> I changed are the you, mic. What, what device are you on? Are you on your phone or are you on a computer? I'm actually on my laptop. I'm on the computer. Okay. Do, does your laptop have a camera? It does. Wow, it should have automatically came on for you. Okay, it didn't pop on. So I'll just roll with you all, though. Thank you. Yes, for and we're going to roll with it because that's a beautiful picture so everybody can see you. <laughs> so I'm going to have you go ahead and introduce yourself. And if you want to continue to try to work on it while we're on, that would be Absolutely. great. But if you'll just go ahead and just introduce yourself to those that are watching. All right, hello, everyone. And thank you, um, Miss Yolanda, for having me on. Um, with these great individuals. I am Sharnissa Washington. I am a 13-year educator. I am a minister and I have the opportunity to be a 
Christian, I, I'll, I'll use that word, a Christian boutique owner. Um, I sell modest and classy clothing to the queen. Um, so I, I have my hands in a few things. I was called to ministry about eight years ago and absolutely love evangelism and outreach. I've been teaching for 13 years, love to change the lives of children, and just enjoy education and serving in ministry. Great. Thank you, Sharnissa. You're welcome. I'm glad you're, you're on with us because I've been watching the work that you've been doing, not only in the, in the in education space, but also just you starting your business and launching the boutique. You know, it's yeah. not easy to start a business. It's not easy to be an entrepreneur. It's not easy to go into fields that may not have a lot of women like the STEM field. But mm -hmm. if it was easy, everyone would do it. This and so I'm, I'm just really encouraged by just young people that I've been watching and how they are launching out into to areas where it's, it, it may not seem like the norm, but it's time for us to see that. And so my first question, this question actually came in um, from those that saw the post online. And, it's, and this question is, what, and you've, some of you have answered a little bit of this, but I want, I want, you, I want to ask this again. But uh, Jay, I'm going to start with you. What what made you focus on the area that you're focusing on? And one of the things that you shared when you were introducing yourself, you talked about how you you realized that in order to get into the business space, that you had people had to know you. They mm -hmm. you had to be connected to the right people that can open the right doors. So tell me a little bit about why you went into uh, why, why you went into the, the work that you're doing now with your business and you shared a little bit, but you go a little deeper for me. And then also you talked about being connected. Let's uh, tell me a little bit about how you've done that, how you've connected yourself to those that are in the business space and how it's benefited you. Okay. Well, um, to, to answer the first part of the question, the reason why I started getting into film scoring music production was really because um, it's a passion, first of all, because uh, I think that I've thought of other businesses where the first uh, reason to get into it was money or was try to make a living or so, and and but this came naturally for me, so it was really a, a matter of trying to figure out how something that's a passion, natural, something that I, I enjoy doing, how I can focus on trying to make something out of that. Um, which makes it easier because since you know you have to ha spend a lot of time doing it and a lot of effort, better it's better to do it at something you like than something that you're just doing it for for a buck and at the end you might not even succeed. So that's the reason how I started and getting into it, uh, realizing how how important it is to network. Uh, I realized that I was in a spot with advantages and disadvantages. Um, I realized that I'm, I'm in a spot where there's a lot of competition, a lot of competitivity yeah. between people, um, not many seats at the table and a lot of people want to have those seats. So it makes it very difficult when people rely on their connections that they've known for 20 years maybe and you're trying to come and take a piece of uh, the cake. But I realized my other advantage is that um, with internet, with social media, with everything that's accessible to us, uh, that I could reach anybody out there um, that that there's really no limit to who I could reach out to. So then it's just a question of how I can use these advantages um, to start to build a network. And when I started, I was very shy. I was very... Um, on, um, uh, I, I wasn't very secure about it. You know, you're like, uh, you have to kind of, you know, say you're doing this or doing that. And I used to be, no, I'm trying. I don't, you know, you don't, you, you don't want to push yourself too hard because you don't want to sound arrogant or you, you don't want people to kind of label you. And um, one day it just hit me that I had nothing to lose at all. And mm -hmm. when I started going in that path, I realized that if I want to make it, I have to be bold. 
Yeah. And so I started actually just knocking on a lot of doors um, online and in person. I started not being afraid because I realized that well, if if I send a message to a person that I've never met and somehow I offend them because I'm trying to ask them if they would like to meet or or connect uh, because we're in the same field. I realized, well, I might never meet that person at all, regardless. So either I take a chance and maybe out of 10 people I try to meet, I could get one response. Well, that means a lot more than just trying to be on my own and just waiting. So um, that's how I kind of approached it for the last two years, being realizing you just have to be bold. And I've met people in conferences like this from – from from across seas and and they've asked me the question how did you actually meet me or or know about me or or what made you come like your screen has frozen up Jay Faduma, I'm going to move to you and have you also. And as he's coming back, he's coming back in. I hear you. You you had faded out for a little bit, Jay. Were you finished, Jay? You had faded out a little bit. Faduma, I'm going to come to you, and, and I'm going to ask you a different question. Okay. I'm going to ask you one about the STEM, because that's one that, that's really... I've really been watching and, and seeing how important it is for young people to start really get involved in STEM at an early age. Mm -hmm. So what would, what would you say to a young girl at a, at a middle school about STEM to really encourage them to get involved in STEM early? All right. So um, thankfully, I've been able to volunteer with Girls Who Code as well as um, Black Girls Code here in New York ever since I came. And the biggest surprise to many people is that in middle school and early on in high school girls do significantly better on their grades when it comes to science, math, and um, any other I guess STEM related course but it's really the little biases and the little microaggressions that they hear during their um, actual classroom experiences that get to them like the surprise of the boys if they get a higher grade or the teacher especially calling them out but not in the best way possible and so what actually helps is letting them know like putting a name to those feelings that they have and so when it happens they kind of go hey I was warned about this and it's okay and um, of course I give that advice of it's not easy it's not easy at all <laughs> and <laughs> you're going to go through a lot of trials and you're gonna go through uh, what you see as failures uh, but in in the in the long-term view when you actually and I didn't really learn this until my first internship that everybody else is learning the, uh, those who were in the field for decades before I was were like excuse me like there are new languages like every couple of years like we're learning just as you are and for me to hear that and be like oh okay <laughs> was <laughs> very very encouraging and so and it and seeing the applications of what we're learning in the classroom since it's so detailed and just taking a step back and seeing how it affects all different types of uh, fields is really what encourages people because I know very few people who are very just into programming and that's it like they have no other passions or loves for anything else and so a lot of my friends either um, I found a few that have also wanted to combine politics and STEM but others have who've combined their artwork their uh, music their actual aspirations for beyond just like knowing to code and I think allowing people to know that that it's not just a it's not a boys club and B um, you can combine everything you like together is what is super encouraging great that's great thank you for sharing that because I think it's I think it's really important that uh, young girls and even urban kids in inner city areas understand that it's it's okay for them to start doing that. I remember being working at an inner city after school program and working running that organization and 
bringing in students from Vanderbilt University that were um, part of the Lego League. So they came in and helped build robots with Legos and showing them how math is connected. And when we first started, the girls did not want to come in there. They were like, no, we do not want to do that. And I'm like, you have to try it. And if you don't like it after you try it, that's, that's a whole different thing. And so after they went exactly. in and they were showing them how algebra was connected and they actually made the robots work, the girls were really excited and stayed with it. So I think sometimes we have to encourage kids to try those things early and start coding early. Um, and whether they're in an inner city school or they're in a suburbia school that, that they're exposed to those things early. So I'm glad that you have been able to work in, with girls to really encourage them to get involved in that. And I think we have a lot more work to do in that, in that space, but I, I do think we've made some progress. Sharnissa? Yes. I'm going to come to you and just have you share about um, why did you get into education and how do you see yourself connecting the work you do in education, ministry, and business? How do you see all oh, of those wow. connecting? How did you think those came together? Um, well, my parents <laughs> were divorced when I was seven years old. Uh, my father was a cocaine addict, if I can be transparent tonight. And yes, you um, can. It, it, it really affected our family. You, you know, we went from living in this beautiful neighborhood, driving a Cadillac car, um, being a wonderful, beautiful family, to moving to the inner city in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. My mom raising us by our by herself. Um, at night, we would have to go. My brother and I, I have a younger brother, I go to my grandparents' house, and, and then they will send us to school. But when they sent me to school, it seems like it was my outlet. Um, my teachers were just wonderful teachers. They did not know what was going on in the house. They didn't know that we were living in the um, inner city and boiling water because we couldn't pay for the water bill at times and burning candles. But they always told my mother, she's different. There's something about her. So I had teachers that literally loved on me and encouraged me from elementary school all the way through middle school. So in middle school, I knew that I wanted to love on children. I knew that I wanted to have the same effect that teachers had on me. Um, so that really just pushed me. That pushed me to get into education. Um, when it comes to ministry, I, you know, there's a separation between church and state, if we can be honest. Yes. So I can't go into school like, you all need to, you need religion, you know, you need to be this, you need to be that. Come, come to my church and change your life. Um, but what I do is I'm a role model to the children. And when they see something about me like, this lady is different, then, you mm -hmm. know, they begin to inquire, and that's a great start to a great conversation. And then that way I can invite them to church. But if they don't come to church, I bring ministry to my classroom every day. I bring it. Mm -hmm. I bring that love. I bring that inspiration to them. I bring that affection. And I pour into my children because I teach in the inner city of Atlanta, mm -hmm. one of the roughest schools, if I can be honest. And so yes. I find a way to come in and be that light to my students that is that are literally living in a dark place right now literally living in a very dark place right now and and I just put it all together if they want to come to church with me and know more about the God that I serve I welcome that I don't push it but I welcome that and I make sure that I'm their light yes so so what made you start uh, open the boutique what made you start the boutique I know you you, you yeah. launched that like last year I did so, mm-hmm mm -hmm. Um, the boutique came for me because I'm I'm a fa I'm a fashion person. Uh -huh. I'll, I'll call myself that. I, I won't call myself a fashionista. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> but the mothers of my church, um, I grew up under them. And when I was 16, I was literally dressing like I was 65. I mean, <laughs> seriously, if you <laughs> saw me back in the day, you would think, this girl, why does she look like that? Why is she dressing so old? And so I didn't know how to um, serve in the church and dress young because my role models were older, you know, the mothers of the church. So I was yeah. the young lady that was 16 wearing white stockings and black shoes, which is like <laughs> terrible. <laughs> um, so as I got older, I began to really pick up 
fashion. And, and then I wanted to show women how you can go to church and you don't have to quote unquote go to church looking sexy. You know, we're representing God. We're not representing the people that's in the world. I want to show them that you can be modest and still be beautiful. So if you look at my clothing in the boutique, it's more of be beautiful, serve God and represent, look like a woman and look like a woman of God. So that really pushed me um, to just show young women how they can be beautiful and still serve the Lord. That's good, Shanessa. That's good. And, and it's good that a lot of times we talk about issues and concerns, but we don't come up with solutions. And one of the things I used to say to my staff, I said, if you come to me with an issue or concern of something that's going on in the, in the organization or in the company, but you don't come to me with a solution, that's not leadership. So mm -hmm. if there is a problem that you see, you need to come to the table with a solution. So, and I feel like that's what you've done, Sharnissa, with, with opening that boutique, is that you saw something that really concerned you. I see you now. Oh, my goodness. I'm in. I see you. <laughs> <laughs> and you came up with a solution to, to what you yeah. saw was, was something that wasn't good for you. And so yeah. that's how we are innovative. Yeah. Uh, Jay, are you still with us? I'm still with you. It looks like I see my me? picture on top of you. <laughs> <laughs> like maybe your camera left or something. Um, one of my next question for you guys uh, is going to be: What do you think the struggles are for young professionals today? Jay, I'm gonna I'm gonna turn that over to you to start that that question, answering mm -hmm. that question first. Okay. Can you can you hear me well? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, great. Well, um, I, I really liked what you said before we started when you were talking about your book. Uh -huh. And you said that starting a business, we often think it's opening an office, having a building, doing those kind of things. And I think for me, what made me struggle a lot was that mindset that for me to succeed, I needed things around me. Um, mm -hmm. Very early on, I was like, if I want to be a good musician, then I need to have the best instrument. If I want to be a good musician, I need to have the best re rehearsal room. Um, then when I went on to, 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 to production, I need to have the best softwares, the best computer, the best office. And, and it went on to a point where I was like, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to be able to work if I don't have the best AC next to me, you know? So it, it becomes like so in, trapped in your mind that you need things around you to make it rather than than one into you. So I think that's one of the, the major things, at least for me, uh, that I struggle with, and I've seen people struggle with that as well. Okay. But do my, will you answer that? What do you what do you see the young professionals or young students that you're around? What do you see that they're struggling the most with? Oh, let's see. For sure. Um, Continuing on with what Jay just said, waiting for the perfect opportunity and waiting for the perfect time. Um, I think people wait for the package to be, like, to come with a bow tie or something for it to, like, be like, okay, I can do this now. And so for myself, I would say in terms of what may be lacking is that there's no kind of drive to seek out mentors right away. Um, mm. a, a lot of students around my age kind of feel like, oh no, I know exactly what I'm doing and I'm going to do it differently and I don't need to hear from those who have been in the field for much longer than I have. And it's, 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 it's good to also know where you draw the line in terms of somebody telling you what's good about your idea, what's not good about your idea, because uh, it's just as important to know what's good for you as for what's bad for you. But in terms of looking out, for those who can benefit you in terms of advice, in terms of support, people kind of just look towards, at least in the tech community, only those that can help them with raising funds for their startup or connect them mm -hmm. to funds versus connecting them to somebody who may be able to tell them, what do you do when you feel burnt out and you're only like 22 years old? Like, and so, yeah. and what to do when um, you have to balance other things outside because people uh, often assume like, family's always going to stay the same, your health is always going to stay the same, so when something changes, they just don't know how to deal with it, so everything drops. And so um, hopefully I can master the skill of seeking out help when I know I need it. 
That's great. That I tell that to young people all the time. I say, like, do you have a mentor? Have you reached out to someone to get some support? And a lot of times we can be so self-sufficient. I still have mentors, and I've been doing business and, and running companies and, and, and teaching for a long time, but I still have mentors. One of my, my, my most favorite mentors, she's actually 100 years wow. old, and I love sitting wow. with her and just wow. asking her questions. Miss 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 Bernice Brunson, she's amazing, and and I remember what's so funny that I was sitting with her the last time, and I'm sitting in a chair next to her, and I wasn't facing her talking, and she was like, "I'm a hundred. I need you to be a little closer." So she still has that. <laughs> she still has that point. She said, "The hearing aid is on this side. I need you to come closer." <laughs> and uh, but but I think it's so important, and I think a lot of times people think that. They, they won't get the help if they ask for it. But a lot of people are willing to do it, but mm -hmm. you have to will, be willing to step out and ask for that help and, and understanding that we all need help. Because a lot of times we walk around like we have no problems. That's why I was sharing when we came on earlier that when you get ready to take your business, your ministry, your, your idea to that next level, you're going to run into some walls. But because those walls are there, doesn't mean you stop. And so... We don't have to pretend that everything's always good. And I think as a, as a, as a community and, and just, just period, as people, we think that every time somebody asks us how we're doing, we have to say, oh, I'm great, even if you're not. And I think that's what keeps us from going mm -hmm. to the next level because we think that everybody has it together and everybody's doing well, but everybody's trying to make it to that next level. And it takes those mentors and those coaches to help you go to that next level. Sharnissa, what are you seeing with young people and young professionals that you're around, whether it's an educator or young people at your church? What are you seeing them struggle with? Um, I, I, I totally agree with you, lady said, having a mentor having someone that you can talk with and be transparent with and just be real with um, without them sharing your business with everyone. I, I think um, we, I've also see a lot of young people losing their identity because they're trying to be like someone else. And, and when mm -hmm. you're trying to in, um, imitate someone else, you're not really yourself, of mm -hmm. course. So I, I think just one of the main mm -hmm. reasons is no mentor, and then them just finding their own identity. Mm -hmm. How do you, how, okay, I'm, go, I'm gonna do a, a political question. <laughs> I wasn't going to do it, but somebody didn't sit it twice and wanted, wanted to get your feedback on it. Um, <laughs> how, do you, how do you feel that young people should be involved in politics? How, what do you see the young professional's role in politics? But I know that even, even when I was younger, I could see those that came before me in the 50s and 60s that were still out there kind of with their platform and talking and sharing and voting and encouraging others to vote. Where do you see the young person's place when it comes to politics? So, Duma, I'm going to start with you. All right. Um, so I'm someone, not just because my minor is also politically related, but as someone who, I was born in Canada, I became a U.S. citizen right before I turned 18, and like my thing was like, oh my God, I can actually vote now. And <laughs> why that was, was um, President Obama was elected the first time when I was in seventh grade, and everyone around me was crying and cheering, and that's, and like, I was just like, okay, this is cool, but, like, why Why are you crying? And it wasn't until, I would say, two, three years later where I understood the significance of it and why, and how my, I have two very young brothers, seven and eight years old, and they've only known President Obama to be president. Wow. And so yeah. for a man that looks just like them to be president, to them is, like, it's normal. It's, like, the thing. So when I'm telling them, no, it's going to be somebody else next year, they're, like, okay, but that's okay. And, like... It's just so amazing that most, uh, and I think statistically this is proven to be that young people were able to get President Obama elected the first time around. And it was his platform of hope and change and changing this whole systemic kind of government in a way that to overhaul it. And even though um, what has been proven to young voters is also that you have to vote in local elections just as much as you vote in national elections to actually see change. I think that he instilled a lot of hope 
and many people that we're seeing happen again this time around. Even though this time around, I feel like it's a lot worse <laughs> in regards to what's going on nationally. But um, for I turned 20 uh, on Tuesday, and the gift that I asked for all, from all my friends was to go register to vote. Like I set up like a little link and everything, and I was like, it's super easy. Like please just either you register to vote or you get one of your parents to register to vote. I, I don't really mind who you vote for, kind of, but like uh, as long <laughs> as you do practice uh, what you believe in yes. is what kind of, what A, essentially my parents came here for when they left Somalia in the early uh, 90s is to have that freedom of having a say in your government and even though it's very easy to be apathetic and think that one vote doesn't count, when you put all of those votes together, you swing an election this way or that way. Great. Jay, what are your thoughts on young professionals and voting, the, politi the political side of things? <laughs> well, um... <laughs> and I want you to say it in French. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'll sing the Marseillaise when this is over. Um, okay. <laughs> I, 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 I really agree with what Fatuma said about voting because I think that's one of the saddest things that um, and huge democracies whether it's you know in Europe or even in the United States that you know barely 50 percent of the people actually really vote so it's it, it's not even revealing of what it is and I found myself in one situation voting for the presidency in France and I didn't really agree with either of the two runners for, for the, the final round. And mm -hmm. I, we have what we call a blank vote. So you can vote, you're registered, they count your vote, but you've stated that you're not in, a, you're not in agreement with I, either of these two parties. And I think mm -hmm. even th that statement is, 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 they can even use those in statistics because I think that if more people decide to just even show up and, 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 and just make their voice count in whichever way, you know, whatever way you choose, but at least you made your, vo your, your voice count. Well, then, at the end of the day, people are, can have a, a truer picture of what people think in regards to politics. And I think it's important just to know what goes on and know the rules, even, even if you don't agree with, with what's going on. But I think there's a lot of things that happen without us really even, you know, realizing what's going on. So. Mm -hmm. Great. Sharnissa, what's your thoughts on that? Um, <laughs> I, I do believe that we should definitely exercise our right to vote. I feel like the baby boomers are holding on to it saying, you know, we've been through so much, we've seen so much, we want to hold on to um, our conservative way. Um, my generation, Generation X, I think we've kind of dropped the ball but then you have that younger generation that's saying, let's push it and let's change. Um, but I myself, I, I, I know that as a Christian, I, I can't walk around um, talking politics all day long. I know that that is true. But I know that as a, I'm a Christian, but I'm also a citizen of the United States of America. And it mm -hmm. is the government that runs everything in America. So I believe that we need to exercise that. And and if we want to see a change, that requires me going to that to that place to, to register to vote and actually making that vote so that we can see a change not only in our communities, but also in our country. I definitely want to encourage my generation not to be lazy and be slowful, um, like Fatima said, and thinking, well, my vote is not going to count. Every vote counts. Exactly. I wanted to hear your perspective on that because I know what my generation, when I sit with them and talk, and I wanted to hear from the younger generation to see what your thoughts are. So it was great to hear your feedback on that. And it's definitely very important that, and our vote does count. Um, the local level is so is, is, is important as well as the national. And so I was glad Fatima shared that, that local is very important because a lot of things that really going to happen that's going to impact your neighborhood is in your local yeah. elections. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to throw that in. I wasn't going to ask a political question. I was going to stick to business entrepreneurship, but then somebody texted me and said, ask them about the elections. <laughs> <laughs> and so one of the things, I have just a few more questions for you before we end the show. And, and my next one is, what would you say to your younger self? What would you go back and say to your younger self, Sharnissa? 
Wow, that's that's a great question. Um, I would tell my younger self, <laughs> you you know you know why I said it's a great question because I uh-huh. want to go back to my younger self <laughs> and have a conversation with her. Exactly, <laughs> and I want to tell her why did you wait so late to get started in so many things? <laughs> you know, like the person who who said in a couple years you're going to be able to get on Google and do a live interview, and there were some people like that's never going to happen. <laughs> yeah, that's how I feel. My younger self, uh-huh. I, I would like to tell her, this could have happened a lot sooner if you would have started a lot sooner. Um, I definitely want to tell her that. And I will, I would have told my younger self, you know, don't doubt yourself and take risk. I, younger, I was really wasn't a risk taker. You know, I wanted to uh-huh. hold on to my 20 cents when I could have been making a dollar, but I wanted to hold on to my 20 cents. So I would uh-huh. definitely say be that risk taker. Um, Don't put walls around yourself. I was very guarded. Put down your walls to let people in because there are some people that you can let in that can really, really help you along the way. Great. Yeah. Fatuma, what what would you say to your younger self? Uh, Let's see. I share a lot of what I would usually say to my younger self with my sisters a lot since I'm Uh the eldest. (laughs) So, like, I just throw everything at them. But in terms of I guess doubting myself as well as it's still something I deal with is being guarded. Um, I'm usually known to be just like super happy all the time and I'm like no that's not the case and so (laughs) in terms of actually having a vision for myself I always thought of myself as I grew up in San Jose I'm gonna go to college in San Jose I'm gonna stay there and anywhere else isn't really gonna benefit me and so when I moved to go to NYU a year and a half ago. It was the most terrifying thing because I was quiet as a mouse, um, still am sometimes, but I learned very quickly that unless you put yourself in an uncomfortable situation, you won't learn. And so I could have, um, I could have definitely like just stayed my, I guess, old self and like um, not have survived really in New York because it's like, I think it's the craziest place in the world, but I need to travel (laughs) more maybe. But um, for now it is to me. And so, I'm super glad that I moved here and that I'm like kind of learning those lessons along the way. It's a struggle. It's a struggle. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Jay, what would you say, tell your younger self, Jeremiah? Uh, I would say what Charnisa said. I would I would say don't wait, wake up and just go for it because I think that we we waste a lot of time. That's I mean, at least I did, so that's what I would say. Quit wait. You would say quit wasting time. Just do it. Yeah, yeah just do it. <laughs> Wake up. Just go for it. Yeah. Go for it. So young people that, that are listening tonight, they said, wake up. Don't waste time. Start and do it now. Come out of your yeah. comfort zone. Ask for a mentor. Ask someone to help you. Don't feel like you have to be so self-sufficient that you don't need any help. So those that are watching, this was great wisdom nuggets from these young professionals. And and, and what I realized is, as I've been talking with you guys, that along your journey, you've had many people that have spoken into your lives that helped you go to that next level in your career decision, what you would major in in college. You've had those people. So as you continue your journey, I see that there'll be more people that come. And what, what we have to do is be open when those people come to help us go to that next level. One of the things that I always do, especially when I was younger in my 20s, if I was interested in a position or wanted to do a certain thing, I would find someone that was doing it and was doing it great. And I would go hang out with them. I would call them up and say, can I come and just volunteer in your office? Can I come and help you? Are you working on something where I can help you with it? And and, and what I realized along my, my journey as I did that Every position that I've ever had, I never had to interview for. I would have people that call me to say, we thought you would be good for this position. So what I tell young people that are on college campus, I I say to them, you're interviewing the whole time that you're on that campus. Or if you get in a new position, you're interviewing that whole time that you're working. Because it could be another position that you want to go into and understand that when when you leave the room, that's when major decisions are happening about you. So what impression did you leave with them while you were in the room? And so we have to, as we, we move forward, we have to realize that along this journey, people are watching. I remember going to interview setting 
and interviewing this young person and had another person in the room with me that had been their professor. And this student came to class late every day. And so when they walked into the interview, it scared them to death because I think they had a flashback. So, oh my God, that's the that professor that I never showed up on time and now they're interviewing me. Wow. So we have to remember those things that we never know how we're gonna run into that person again or how that person's gonna impact the next level that we go to. And so my last question to you guys, one of the things that's very important to me, anything that I get involved in, I always try to find a way that I can give back to the community. And so I want to hear how important is giving back to you and how do you see getting other young people to see that how important it is that not only that we find our career paths, that we make money, but that we are making an impact in our communities. Sharnice, I'm going to start with you. Okay. Um, uh I love my community because my community is what saves me in Milwaukee. Um, I actually volunteer for the for the Boys and Girls Club, so I make sure that I get in there and, and talk to some young people and, and, and build relationships with those young people. And also with my church, I'm involved with the outreach in my church. So it is my job as someone that grew up in the inner city to go back into the community and especially with my church family to really pour into the individuals in the community, whether it's serving food um, here in right. Atlanta, and I'm not bragging at all, but I'm actually sharing what I do. Um, uh -huh. We've gone down to the shelter and served or passed out food in the community on um, in the fall, we had a football league that was in our community and we weren't asking for anything. We would cook food, hot dogs, chips, and we would serve it to those young men while they were having practice just to let them know, you know, you could be game banging, you could be selling drugs, but you're on this football team because you're trying to stay off the streets. So just yeah. encouraging them. Um, one, another thing that we do is we have an apartment complex near our church. So we just go in and sing songs with children when I lived in Nashville and, and pass out food and read books. It was, it's always a passion. My passion, my passion has always been what God has put in me I want to put it back into other people. And my reward is not going to be money. I'm not looking for that. I'm looking for my reward to be another young person has been saved. Another young person has a life. Another young person can push their way out of whatever situation they were in. So serving in your community is showing that you're giving back and you're doing it from the heart. Great. That's great. Thank you. But Duma, what, what what is your thoughts about giving back and how important that is, even for your professional growth, but also just helping that next person? How do you see that? Well, yes, for sure. Um, as a younger person, I I definitely remember the faces and the names of those who either I was a part of Boys and Girls Club as a younger person, so I like. I remember my coaches the most. I remember my teachers that stayed after school with us just in case if our parents were running late. And they didn't have to. They could have easily left us. But they stayed with us. They um, gave us snacks and just chatted with us. And those are the names I remember more so than um, and stories and the emotions I have tied to them versus, like, former bosses or um, just people that kind of, like, help you professionally. And so to me, it's about envisioning who helped me and not just like passing along the tr like torch because I have to but because I know how much it means to this young student even though they may not see it to them I'm just like oh Ms. Osmond is here like that's it but then like later on if I like uh, if something happens at home or if they just want to like chat like they know they can reach out and know that they don't have like the, the kind of like pressure of like maybe a family member or the pressure of like impressing a fellow student and to me it's just about having that one friend that you know you can like tell and share anything with whether it has to do with like your academics whether it has to do with just your life or whether or not you just want to like hey this happened and I, l let me figure out this fight I just had with my best friend or something like that and so just being there is what means the most for I would say giving back. Right. Jeremiah? Um, for me, I mean, how can I say it? My community is still helping me, so I guess, <laughs> yeah. I guess it's important to, have, to, to give back to the community. That's for sure. <laughs> and uh, I mean, 
my dad used to tell me, if you know how to help people around you, you're never going to look for a job in your life. Yeah. And it's important to give because, I mean, like, like Sharnice was saying, I mean, I'm blessed to have a church where I have a lot of friends, I have a lot of people that, you know, if that help me and I'm able to help back. And, and I think it's rewarding when you get to that point where you don't have to count. You know, we often get in, the, in this point where they're asking me for this favor. Oh, I did that favor, or or they did this favor, so I should give it back and try to always keep it on equal. I think it's really healthy when you're not even counting anymore, and you're just giving, and 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 you feel blessed when people give back to you without that, you know, sense of, um, without feeling like you're gonna owe them something because they help. Yeah. So 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 I think it's really important because. You know, I mean, when you make it, you know, people are going to ask for your help. And if you want to make it, people will have to, 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 to lend a hand to you. So, I mean, it's it's a circle. And if you don't have people at one point, you're going to find yourself very lonely, I think. so. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, I think, I think it's very important that give back peace as we continue to grow our businesses or finish school or get move our careers to that next level that that – that giving back piece is what's going to allow us to even go further because if we're if we're so self-absorbed and only thinking about ourselves it really halts where how far we can actually go and so I want to thank you guys for joining table talk tonight I wanted I wanted you guys to come on I've done some other educators I've done older people I've done relationships but I wanted young people to see some other young people that are doing some phenomenal things that are still on their journey and going to that next level I wanted them to hear from you guys, and and so I'm so glad that you you were able to come on and spend some time with me on Table Talk, and so I want to, again, thank you for coming on, and Jay, you know I'm going to have you, I want all of you guys to, to just leave one thing that you would want to say to a young professional or a young person that may be watching tonight, and Jay, I want you to give us a little French before you, <laughs> before you <laughs> sign off. <laughs> Oh. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come to you first and just what would, what was okay. one thing that you want to leave with a young person that may be watching tonight? Uh, I would say uh, n'abandonne pas, which means don't give up. Uh, I think that's... I say mean, that again, Jay? 20 phrases. Don't give up. Don't give up. And say yeah. it in French again? <laughs> okay. <laughs> n'abandonne pas. Thank you. Thank you, Jay, for joining us. I know you're on a different time zone, so I appreciate you coming on tonight. My pleasure. And Fiduma, I want you to, I want Fiduma, just tell me what one thing that you would leave to, with a young person tonight as well. You'll never know what could happen if you don't even try. And so I just always keep that in mind in terms of knowing that taking a risk is going to maybe have some implications. But if you didn't try, you would have never known either the, the next opportunity that could have came along, either the connection that you could have made, or, yeah, so your world could radically change by just keeping that in mind. Great. Sharnissa? Find your purpose. Connect that with passion. And go for whatever it is that you really want to do in life. Great. Thank you guys again for joining us for Table Talk, and we will see you next time. Thanks for my guests that have joined us today That we were, as we were talking about career development, entrepreneurship, um, STEM, politics. We, can't, we tried to get it all in tonight, so I thank you guys for joining us, and we will see you next time. You guys have a great night. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.